Good afternoon and welcome back to My Harlem Portraits, the show that aims at shedding a light on the fundamental contribution of African-Americans, black and brown people in this country and their contribution to the building of this country. Today, we have here two guests who are in this moment on Broadway on a play that is to say stunning is to say little. So I want to introduce them to you. We have Harlem's own Kara Young, who plays Jess, who made their broader debut in Lynn Notage Clyde's. And for that, she received a Tony nomination for best performance by an actress in a future role and who already had, we had the pleasure of having to my Harlem portraits. Welcome, Cara. Thank you for having me again. And David Zayas, who plays Eddie, who is best known for his role as Angel Batista on the award-winning series, Dexter. I love Dexter. I've been <laughs> watching all the episodes of Dexter. When I was in Italy, he, I was following it, so. And on Broadway, he appeared in the Pulitzer Prize winning Anna in the Tropics by Nilo Cruz. Welcome, David. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for finding time to be with me. You are performing every day. And on Wednesdays, you have twice, I think, also. So you are on a marathon. And it is a very, very difficult play to perform, I believe. So you're actually currently starring on Broadway and the play is The Cost of Living. But, and it's playing in the Samuel J. Freedom Theater. It is a 2016 play by playwright Martina Magyok, who won the 2018 Pulitzer Prize for Drama, as well as two Lucille Lortel Awards, including Outstanding Play. And also now, as it was before he made it to Broadway, it's directed by OB Award winner, Joe Bonney. So you, Cara and David, joined the original stars of the play, Greg mm -hmm. Mozala and Kathy Sullivan in this production, which has been having raving reviews. So let's start by what you play, Cara, and what you, Cara, can you play, David, in this play? Um, yes, thank you so much, Maria, uh, for having me back. Um, I am just in cost of living, a first generation American. Um, and who is a graduate of a prestigious Ivy League school, um, but due to the effects of capitalism and, you know, the way the world works, um, my circumstances at the current moment, it, it, not, everything that I've ever worked for, it's not actually in favor to me uh, because of, of capitalism in this country and, and all over the world. But uh, we see her journey uh, being hired for a job that she really needs uh, for consistency, for financial consistency. And we see um, literally two moments or two moments in the play or times in the play. We follow from September to December in the play and we see how that that unravels. And I don't want to give too much away, but um, it's hard times and it's probably many one of the jobs. Right. It's like one of the probably one of the most profound sort of d deepest circumstances that she's in at the moment in, in, in a real, uh, real uh, heightened need for the things that we'd see, which is like connection. You know, she's in deep need for connection um, as well as all of the other things that I mentioned. Yeah. Thank you. And David. Yes, thank you for having me, Maria. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I play Eddie Torres, who is an um, he's an unemployed truck driver uh, with uh, with a lot of problems and a big heart. 
and I think that um, he's a an, an recovering alcoholic. He's got a lot of flaws in his character, but um, the challenge with him in this play is the um, the realization of crippling loneliness that now he's got to deal with. He's got to deal with in a straight way, not with alcohol, not with, but he's got to somehow search into his soul and see how he can negotiate this uh, this this just lonely feeling that that he can't really, you know, process. So loneliness and uh, sense of uh, need, yeah. both emotional and uh, financial, is really that uh, is common to both of you, right? In this play, and mm -hmm. then there are the other two characters. Mm -hmm. Because the the stage is set up as like like a kind of turntable where on one side we see Kara and her, the character she plays with, and on the other side we see you and the character you play. With. Mm -hmm. So tell me, Kara, who is the other person in the play for you? John, who's played by the incredible Greg Mosgala. Um, a, a disabled actor with cerebral palsy who's portraying someone who has severe cerebral palsy. Um, and uh, he's my employer. He's the person that I'm, I'm looking for a job. I'm, I need this job from him in particular when we first meet our characters. Um, and we develop a very close relationship over the, over the course of the play. I mean, again, we only see it's really two pivotal times in the play, September and December. So, you know, it's up to us and the actors and also the audience to experience, you know, what might have happened in between, how much, how deep this relationship has, has become and um, our working relationship and also just what it means to be two people together in a space. Um, what kind of what kind of um, uh, release and relief does this particular uh, moment in the day provide for me uh, is how I am, how I can most describe it. Cause I can't really speak for John or Greg Mosgala in the way that he approaches his character, but John for lack of a better explanation is my employer. Yeah. Who we see that relationship blossom Great. and fall at the same time. I'm full pretty in in a very interesting way let's put it this way yeah david um yes my i my character is a little bit different in that uh he had been married to uh to you know um to katie sullivan the incredible katie sullivan who uh who plays annie and he's trying i mean they're separated he's wow. living with another person and she has an accident where she loses her legs and she becomes a quadriplegic and he goes back to try and try to help her try to to see if he can like find some kind of redemption in in all the failure that he's had in the past with this relationship and uh and he's relentless about it so it's he's trying to get go back and try to to help her to be her caretaker um, much to her resistance, you know, but um, but Eddie's pretty relentless when it comes to that. So it's it's that dynamic, and the the reason I say it's a little different is because our relationship, since we've been married for like twenty years or so, there is an establishment of what we know about each other, mm -hmm. and so that that the dynamics of that is a, a little different. It takes it goes into a different direction. And so, um, and then, you know, he finally does uh, have an opportunity to, to take care of her. And, you know, it doesn't always go well. You know, it's, it's, there's a lot of, you know, conflict there, but um, he's trying. He's trying. He's trying very hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the first things that uh, stunned me 
I had no idea what the play was about. That's what I like to do, not to read about it if I can avoid it, because I want to have my you know, fresh ideas and so on. But this really stunned me because I had no idea it was about taking care of people. This is really a play that talks about how we take care of other people as well as taking care of ourselves at the same time by doing that. Right. And the choice of having uh, two actors whom at first I thought they were playing the paraplegic and so on. But then when I saw at the end, I realized they are not, they are really real life people who have those disabilities. And I think that is an amazing thing that Broadway did that because Broadway is very resistant to everything that is not what is within the, the accepted uh, concept, okay? Yeah. So for you, this must have been a very difficult role, as I said before. So what prompted you to take up this challenge? It's a challenge, I suppose. Me? Oh. Oh. <laughs> um, first, I read the play, and I, I also want to comment on what you said. I think it's also the creators. I mean, you know, bless Martina Mayoke for yeah. her pen and her genius writing a play like this based on some experiences that she's had, based on, you know, what she wants to see, based on, you know, what the world really looks like. So um bless her for writing it first you know for 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 broadway to even have an opportunity to to put this up um and it yeah, is a long it's a long time coming i i i agree with that um and there's much more to see you know there's much many 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 more stories to tell also uh so I read the play to begin with, and I was really blown away by the play. I was blown, I, there were many moments where I stepped away and took like very deep moments to myself by what I just read or what I just felt. And I feel like this kind of thing continues to happen as as the play is actually going along, even up on its feet with all the full, full elements fully realized um, on the stage. You know, reading it on the page to what it what it feels like doing it is, yeah, revelation after revelation after revelation. I think it's so challenging. It's challenging every night. The challenge doesn't stop. <laughs> it's not over until the last performance. And even in that, I'm still gonna be like, you know, after. So, um, it is. A, it was a challenge. It is the challenge, and it will continue to be. Um, so I don't think I, there's no definitive answer for you for that. So you pick, it, it, you pick up the challenge because you like to take challenges. I guess maybe, I and you know, I feel like every kind of role is supposed to sort of stretch your instrument, you know, in some kind of way. It's like, you know, like, are you, does a, a pianist, does, do they learn, you know, do they also learn Bach? Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, it's, I think it's just what, what how do how do i stretch the stretch it and this is sort of like a uh, playing um that thing i can never remember patting my head and rubbing my stomach at the same time and it's particular in that shower scene you know yeah. and, and also in martina's writing it's very very it's very challenging um just like what the moment because sometimes moments finally find its full like I understood it what it was, but then now it's like some other spiritual connection to what the moment is. And, you know, it's almost like you can't even recreate it every night. Sometimes it's not about it's about like the full feeling life on stage with what has been rehearsed and created. I'm talking, but no, it, it's I, I know exactly what you're talking about, and I know the viewers will understand what's going on. And that scene of the shower, it's, that's what I was just, wow. Are we really seeing that? So you had a similar scene. What, what 
prompted you to take up this challenge? Um, I've known about this play since, you know, 2017, and I never saw it. I never saw another production of it. But I read it, and uh, it fascinated me. I was It, it was partly, uh, you know, during the pandemic, I've been I've worked sporadically. It was a lot of downtime, and I wanted to jump into a project that would challenge me. Uh, I didn't, it didn't, I had no idea how much it would challenge me. I thought it would be, okay, yeah, this is difficult, but it was so, and, and like Kyle said, every night is like doing the play f for me for the first time, because you discover new things. It's, you have to be on that, on that train that those moments are different every night and you, you discover new moments every night. Um, but when I read it, I was like, I immediately wanted to, to do it. Um, and I'm glad I did though. I you know there's a time in the middle of it where I'm like, should I be doing this? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, uh, you know, Martina wrote a beautiful play and, um, it was, it's, it, 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 it goes deep. It goes deep. And, and yes, her, her writing, I would say is is so um, you know naturalistic that sometimes it's difficult technically to grasp it. Um, you do eventually, but it's it's harder than you think it would be, um, especially with all the physicality that you know, like what Kara does in the shower scene, or all the physicality of me going back. It's 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 so specific, mm -hmm. and it's so. Uh, exciting every night to do because sometimes we don't know what's going to happen you know so it's yeah it's, uh, it's one of those things and um but i mean i everyone it's it's the kind of environment i feel everybody really cares about this play everybody really cares about telling the story uh the holding the integrity of the script and and you know everybody really cares. I love working with Katie. I love working with Greg, even though I have no scenes with them. And I love working with Kara, which we have that final scene. But it's it's just a a journey that has surpassed what I thought it would be in the experience and the growth that I I learned during this play as an actor. So it's it's uh, so happy I did it. Yeah, because I can imagine once, as you said, is reading it on the in a book. Read it, and once it's been there and having to play it out. Right. What about the lightest moments, happiest moments during the play? Well, I think that there's a certain humor that Eddie has, not always appropriate, <laughs> but there's a certain humor that he brings into some dark situations. And I think he, uh, it comes out of him. I don't think it's something that he plans. I think it just comes out of him. Um, so I think that's, to me, that, that was the, there's a lot of humorous moments, a lot of funny moments that, um, you know, just like some of, you know, if you go to a family gathering, some some mm -hmm. of your uncles and aunts, they would say the darnest things. They would just like, <laughs> and we're just nod our head. But uh, I think Eddie doesn't have too much of a filter mm -hmm. um, with what he says and try to make light of whatever moments because the the feeling of awkwardness is just like kryptonite to him he, he wants to light the situation as much as he can and um you know under these circumstances in the condition of these plays and and these scenes um he relies on humor to get through these difficult moments in the scene and you, for you cara the lightest, I mean, sometimes that, I mean, it varies sometimes, sometimes. I mean, like, I know, I know, like, at the top of, I know at the top of certain scenes, like, honestly, it's like, it's a beautiful journey that, that, that Martina's mapped out. The top, at, at, in that shower scene, it feels like that's the, it's a moment to, like, re literally release, like, to really feel connected yeah. to, to John and, in that most intimate way, it's sort of symbolic in regards to like what what I'm actually doing in the scene and how heightened yeah. the and vibrant uh, that 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 uh, that emotional place is. 
um i feel like at the top of that other scene too, the the date scene if i feel like that's one of our one of my lightest moments and i also feel like there's like little sparks of joy yeah. in the first meet of mm -hmm of uh john and 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 and, uh, and the second and the shaving scene too i mean i think there's sparks of joy throughout the entire play but sometimes it varies sometimes it's a cover-up and yeah you know sometimes it's armor um but yeah i think it's various so what is the message that you think that you want this play and what you want people that who see the play to come home with? And uh, why would you say to the viewers of My Harlem Portraits to come and see this play? From you, Clara. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 you know, Maria G, I feel like, I feel like there's so many things to walk away from, to walk away with. Uh, I really, there's, uh, if I say something right now, it's not going to be a definitive. It's like, there's a all constant evolution of, of how, what this, what this play is doing to me as the actor, even watching, even looking at, you know, being backstage and seeing Eddie and the Eddie and Ani scenes, you know, what it, what, how I hear it differently every night, what you know, I'm getting a gift that the audience is really not getting in a way, in a, in a large way, because I'm getting to experience the play every single day as an outsider and also as somebody who's inside. Um, very long winded to say, I feel like what it really means to be with each other, like what it really means to to sit with one another and when and even at our most vulnerable. And it's like almost like to maybe to remind to remind people that you know you can need someone and that is okay. I mean, I don't know. And also like hope for hope in humanity, like being hopeful in humanity. I mean, not to give too much, but our there's the, the scene that we're left with feels like we need to say yes to each other more instead of pushing each other away, you know? Yes. David? Well, you know, I, it's, it, it, that's, it's a very complicated question. Um, I, I feel like I, you know, my, I could only look at it from my experiences in watching other plays. Uh, if I see a play or if I, hear, if I see a story where I can place myself, David, in that character and think about what I would do and what I wouldn't do and what is uh, something that I'm able to do and what I'm not able to do. I think that a lot of people that come see this play put themselves in each of us in, in, the, in that position and find out. But ultimately, the beauty about what Martina wrote is about, is about caring, caring so much that it hurts caring about you know your life because the one thing i feel uh none of these characters have is i feel, oh, i feel sorry for myself i'm giving up no one's giving up in this play no one is giving up in this play happiness is a far you know far goal but there, there's no plan on stopping if not he would go back to the bottle if not he would just you know commit a crime, whatever it is that he acts out in when there's absolutely no hope. So I feel this play is so hopeful, so hopeful about the human condition and what happens to these kinds of people when these certain circumstances happen to them um, or happen to the people that they love, you know? And so I think that's where I feel like what this play is about is about holding a mirror to whoever's watching to see how they would react and to see how they would feel in those circumstances. And to me, those are always the plays that stay in my mind for forever and just moments that stick to my mind forever. And I feel Martina wrote this play, which are full of those moments. Yeah, I am you. You're right. Because 
also the fact that you see um, Greg and Katie in the end when you come all out and greet the public and you think, had I been in their situation, would I be able to be that strong and to accomplish that much to be really an example uh, to look up to and say, we can do it. We can do anything we put to our mind, no matter the disabilities of our body or, or our inside. We can do that. And that is fantastic to see. But you come out and you are like, I need to think about this. <laughs> At first, it's like a heavy, heavy feeling. And then it's like, no, this is beauty. This is light. This is hope. So talking to you now, it, it, it's bringing back a lot of those feelings I felt. And I know that people are going to see this play. They're going to change forever a little bit by seeing this. Mm. Mm. Thanks to you, thanks to the writer, thanks to everybody who has cooperated in making this. Thank you. So, until when is the play on? Till November 6th. Oh, November 6th is near, please. <laughs> and see this play, it's a not to be missed play. Go and see. Cost of living playing now till November 6th. Thank you Thank for you. having been with us. Thank you. Thank you, so much, Thank you for giving us this gift. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See Bye. you later, Cara. See you later. Gracias. Adios. Adios. Adios.